Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the book I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, written by Maya Angelou. Now, this book is really interesting. Um, it's not like any other type of book. It's down to earth. Maya Angelou, when she wrote this book, it was about her life and what she went through between the age, the ages of thir um, three years old to 17 years old. And her, the beginning of her life is not really that glamorous. I mean, it has its moments, but it's not, it's not, there's not that many, many highlights within her life. So the novel begins with um, Marguerite and her brother Bailey being moved to Stamp, Arkansas. Um, their parents have a divorce and they decide not to live together, together anymore. And they send their kids out to Stamps, Arkansas. Um, Marguerite has a grandmother, and the grandmother is a, is a pretty interesting grandmother. She's very strong, very resilient. Uh, she takes care of everything for Bailey and Marguerite. Uh, she plays the role of mother, father, caretaker, um, and she's very strict, right? Um, this is the South, and this is the 1900s, and, you know, Back in the South, at that time, you know, especially that time, kids were being whipped. You were taught discipline. You were taught to respect your elders. You were taught to respect church. Marguerite's grandmother is a woman. She's a Christian. She's a very um, devoted Christian, and she doesn't allow kids to misbehave. One of the most interesting things that take place within this novel is when Marguerite gets whipped for saying, by the way, um, and supposedly that was a curse word and the grandmother beats Marguerite for saying, by the way, um, supposedly by the way, had a religious reference to Jesus Christ. So that's why, um, Marguerite, Marguerite gets beaten because you're not supposed to use anything from the Bible in the wrong context. Yeah, this book, it's, it's really interesting the way that Marguerite grows up. Again, Maya Angelou, she's writing about her experiences, what happened in her life. So all of these um, events, all of these experiences are real. So Marguerite and uh, her brother Bailey, they're very close. Um, they're, they're, they have a connection that most people don't have. Um, in the novel, their connection does break and their connection does um, kind of wither away a little bit. But at the beginning, it was very strong, and they only had each other to, to have support. They only had each other to rely and depend on. Um, after living in Stamps for a while, uh, Marguerite and Bailey, they live in Stamps. You know, their parents are divorced, and they're not living in the same place. Um, and, and their grandmother really fulfills all that children need. They have elders. They have food to eat. They have school to go to. So they're necessities are taken care of. Um, in the novel, though, after living in Stamps for, for a while, um, their parents kind of want them back. And so we see Marguerite's father come into Stamps and she takes the, and he takes the kids. Um, and we see this back and forth between parents at certain parts of the novel. You see Marguerite's dad takes the kids or it's the mom that takes the kids or it's the grandparents because there are several things that happen um, to the point where the kids can't stay with one parent. They have to be moved around. Um, after Marguerite and Bailey, they leave Stamps, they leave the grandmother, um, they go and live with their mother. And their mother has a boyfriend. His name is Mr. Freeman. And Mr. Freeman is... Is very strange. When we first meet him, he's not. He's very weird. He doesn't really do anything. He's like a mannequin. He doesn't do anything to to to, to get any attention. Um, and no one really pays any attention to him at first. He only Mr. Freeman only pays attention to Marguerite's mother, and you know he's interested, in lustful um, with her. You know, yeah, that's pretty much his purpose. <laughs> And in the novel, what really happens and what's really traumatizing is that one night while Marguerite 
you know, she's eight years old around this time. And she's probably scared or she's probably, um, during one night, she's probably scared or she's probably, um, you know, doesn't want to sleep in her own bed. And when you're eight years old, that often happens. And she leaves her bed and goes to her mother and she, she goes into her, you know, I guess, parents' bedroom, and she sleeps next to her mother. And her mother's fine with this, but um, while she was sleeping, her mother leaves, and Mr. Freeman and Marguerite are the only two people left in the bed. And while she's sleeping, Marguerite feels something up against her, and Mr. Freeman says to her, if you tell anybody, I'm going to kill your brother, Bailey. And Marguerite is very scared at this because she loves her brother, and they have a really close connection. So she swears she's not going to tell anybody. Um, and basically, Mr. Freeman just abuses and, and um, you know, harasses and sexually abuses Marguerite uh, while nobody knew about this. Now, this even turns to, to be more sinister and more heinous uh, because Mr. Freeman ends up raping Marguerite at the age of eight years old. And he has, he really has no remorse about this. And, you know, Marguerite was scared that um, if she told anybody, Mr. Freeman was going to kill Bailey. It was going to kill her brother. So that was very traumatizing for her. And after this instance, um, and, you know, after a while, the mother, Marguerite's mother, um, gets knowledge of this. And, you know, they go to court, Mr. Freeman is not convicted, but, you know, conveniently, he gets shot and killed. Um, and after this, we see Marguerite and Bailey, they move back to Stamps, Arkansas, and I guess the mother gets her life together. It's, it's very messy, the way that Marguerite's life turns out, or at least the beginning of it, um, you know, when you get raped at eight years old, it's just not, it's traumatizing and it really changes who you are and your parents are split up. Your father is, is not around and your mother is, you know, dating people and she's not really that much, um, there for you. And whenever something bad happens, uh, instead of standing with you and going through it with you she just sends you away to your grandmother um which is you know miles and thousands of miles away so this family to me is very dysfunctional it's not well put together and there, there, there's no support for each other in a family if something bad happens such as rape or anything like that you're supposed to to especially if this is your daughter you're supposed to to give her support and to be there with her but Marguerite's mom just sends her away to her grandmother, and that's the end of it. So Marguerite goes back to Stamps, Arkansas, and her and her brother does go along with her. And, you know, they go through school, and they, they graduate, um, you know, year after year, and they go, they get older. And Marguerite, she grows, she gets to be a pretty tall girl. And Bailey grows too, and he becomes a very attractive guy. Um, and while at Stamps, you know, Marguerite starts to discover herself and starts to discover who she is. Um, and I think that her interaction with Mr. Freeman kind of really, um, kind of really destroys her, her development as a woman, uh, because all she remembers from what Mr. Freeman t did to her was pain because she was an eight year old girl at the time. She wasn't a woman. So, you know, you have a grown man, um, you know, raping you. It, it's just not a fun experience. And that kind of really ruins um, her childhood and her development as a teenager because she, she thought that men could only hurt you. And, you know, she had to go into hospital and she had a lot of bleeding. So it was very traumatizing. And I think it really affected her, her early development. Now, <clears throat> Marguerite in the novel... She's not the prettiest girl, um, and that's th that's depicted, and she even describes it. You know, she sees that other girls are more developed than her. They're more, um, they just look better than her. And that for a while, she didn't go after boys, or she didn't. She just kept to herself and and kept to her books. 
and she became very smart. She was literally at the top of her class. She wasn't valedictorian, but she was close to it. And um, she developed, um, she graduates, um, you know, grade after grade, and she, she's just extremely smart. And after she graduates middle school, and, and by this time she's like around 13, she leaves and she goes back to her mother, um, and Bailey comes with her. Now, they both have graduated. They're both, um, you know, getting older. Uh, eventually, what happens next in the novel is that Marguerite goes to visit her father. And her father had a girlfriend also, and the girlfriend didn't like Marguerite. Um, it, it's very messy. This novel is it's just sad the way in which this family is constructed and what Marguerite has to go through as a young woman and seeing her parents being with different people and how these different people are hurting her. Mr. Freeman raped her and her father, on her father's side, his girlfriend um, despises her because her girl, his, his, her father's girlfriend wanted this perfect life with this perfect husband with perfect kids. You know, that, <laughs> I find that laughable. Everybody is always looking for perfect, perfect, perfect. And life always gives you not perfect, not perfect, not perfect. Which is, I think it's, it's extremely funny uh, because, you know, we humans are always looking for the best, for the, the most wonderful or something without any blemish. And life just, just keeps repeatedly giving you things that you don't want. And um, it's just kind of funny. It's like the kid who's at the dinner table. He wants dessert, but he keeps getting vegetables. So in, in that actuality, I think you can find in every type of book or in reality even. People are always looking for um, the benefits, the pleasures of life, but life just keeps handing you um, L's. So I, I find that to be extremely interesting. Uh, because in, in, in another note of that, it's like, if we think about it, there's always, in every contest, there's always one winner and multiple losers. So there's bound to be more failures than wins. So this woman of, of this girlfriend of Marguerite's father, she wanted everything to be perfect, everything in her house to be perfect. She wanted that, that picture frame family, but she doesn't get it, and... What she gets is this this daughter of her husband who is massively taller than her. And, like, you know, she's dwarfed by Marguerite. Because at this time, Marguerite's around 13 to, to 14, 15. And she's already extremely tall. So Marguerite spends time with her father. They go down into Mexico. And her father gets drunk. Um, she ends up driving a car down a hill when she didn't know how to drive. She ends up spending a month sleeping in the car lot. Her life, <laughs> Marguerite's life is very interesting. In this book, it's just, there's so many things that happen and so much development. And Marguerite was never like any other kid. You know, kids her age in the U.S., you're thinking about school and, 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 and high school and prom and things like that. But she's going on these adventures and her family is so disoriented and she's having so many experiences. There's good and bad. There's horrible and worse. But she's navigating herself through it. Um, after spending a, a month in Mexico, um, you know, her father just really irresponsible. She, go, she gets back to her mother and her brother and um, she she graduates high school. Now, before she graduates high school, uh, one of the most interesting things that happened were the most, um, I, I wouldn't say interesting, let me take that back. I wouldn't say interesting, but the most, I don't know how to describe this, but what happens is Marguerite, she, she's around the age of 16 and 17 by the end of the book, and she's discovering herself as a woman. But she thinks she has a problem because of what happened with Mr. Freeman. She thinks that um, she she doesn't know what she wants. Um, you know, she knows that she's supposed to 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 have a husband or to be with a man, but she she doesn't know exactly. So her body is growing, but she doesn't understand what's going on. She thought 
she had uh, some sort of disease for a while. She thought she was a lesbian. She thought she was this and that. And what happens is she literally, to figure out, I guess, what side of gender she was on, she there's a, a guy that looked good and that she liked and she literally goes out to him and she says um you know i want you to to, to sleep with me and hey he he's like yeah that's no problem I'll, I'll do that and then she gets pregnant um and then she literally tells nobody of this pregnancy uh, she graduates high school before telling anybody of this pregnancy um and she has her kid, and her kid is born, and she has a son, and she loves her son. And the novel kind of ends around there. So, novel, this novel is very interesting. It has a lot of parts to it. Um, it has a, you know, a lot of moving parts, a lot of different parts to it. And it's, it's sad at times. It's interesting at times. It's inspirational at times. It says a lot about women, uh, their identity, how I, their identity can be shaped. Um, the role that men can play um, in, in a woman's life. Um, for Marguerite, sometimes men played a role of dictator. Sometimes men played a role of power. Sometimes men play a role of, of just horrific. Um, you know, it's, it's really different from other novels. Um, you know, you're not getting that, that perfect happy ending, but... It's down to earth story, and it's a real story that that shows you what this woman went through just in the first seventeen years of her life. Um, and I would say most of the experiences that she have, you know, most people who have lived a long, full life didn't have those experiences in their first seventeen years of their um, seventeen years of their life. So I think that this novel. There's a lot to said in it, but the th last thing I want to talk about is the title. So the title of this book is called "I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings." In this novel, we talk a lot, a lot about freedom. We talk a lot about power, uh, and and you know when we think about a caged bird, a, a bird is a creature that was created or born to fly. It was a creature that is that exists to literally be a king or a ruler or queen of the sky. So birds are not really meant to be in cages. They're not biologically or naturally created to live in a cage. They're naturally created to fly, to be free, and to be in the wild. You know, birds, by, they na by their nature, they know how to fly. And when a bird is caged, you literally take that that freedom away from it. You take its natural right away from it when you cage a bird. And so this novel, Margaret, or, or to me, I kind of see Marguerite saying, I know why the caged bird sings. Because for, for, most, for the most part of her life, she was controlled by her elders, by men, by, by race, by the color of her skin, by, by you know, things that she... Um, could not control. And by the end of the novel, she gets to be free in a way. She gets to sing. She gets to, to somehow escape from that cage and fight against the things that wish to, to put her in the cage. And, and the birth of her son and her push to, to be educated, her push to education when when education wasn't really offered for African Americans, because we have to know this is in the you know early mid nineteen hundreds where you know African Americans weren't expected to be to be writers to be successful. They were expected to be maids and carpenters, and so she pushed back against the cage. She pushed back against oppression and racism and the things that wished to keep her down. So. I know why the caged bird sings. I think it's a perfect title for this book, and I, and I think it says a lot about the external forces that try to oppress or to literally bury um, Mar um, Marguerite. So, really interesting novel. I think it says about a lot about African American African American women. Um, you often get 
uh, novels about African American men, but in Marguerite's life, you kind of get this this one woman who is fighting against um, you know passivity, who's fighting against the world that is constantly trying to keep her down. So that is my look on this novel. That is my summary, my review. I hope you guys like that summary. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.